Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, we are in our week 10. Sorry for my uh, voice. I'm not feeling very well. Uh, good morning everyone. Hope uh, you are ready for our uh, lecture this week which is Law of Thoughts. Again, still, uh, we are doing negligence. Yeah? Okay, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain what is negligence. Also, apply the defenses available for uh, negligence. Yeah. Now, what is negligence? Negligence is defined as the breach of legal duty to take care, which results in damage to the plaintiff, undesired by the defendant. Okay. Now, um, there are three elements you establish. If you remember, you have done assault, you have done battery, you have done false imprisonment. Uh, all this uh, thought action has elements. So the last, this one is uh, negligence. We also have elements to be proven, which is a duty of care owed by the defendant to the plaintiff. Uh, second element is the breach of the duty of care by the defendant. And the third element, consequential damage to the plaintiff. Okay. Now, what is duty of care? Right. Uh, duty of care, uh, basically arise in thought. Um, or it also arise in contract. Okay. And, but what is it basically? Okay. Now, uh, it is a duty uh, which is defined as obligation recognized by law to avoid conduct fraud with unreasonable risk of danger to others. So basically, in a negligence, there is a duty owed by the defendant to the plaintiff. Okay. Now, uh, we need to test, okay, uh, how or whether this duty of care exists. Okay. Now, the primary test or principle used to determine the existence of this duty of care is what we call as neighbor principle. Now, this principle was laid down in the landmark case of Donahue Stevenson. Okay, uh, I would like to show you the video first. Okay, uh, then we continue back with our lecture. Okay. Stevenson, 
the ginger beer manufacturer. Two, the manufacturer has a duty of care to the final consumer. And finally, number three, the neighbor principle, the rule that you must love thy neighbor, which becomes in law as you must not injure your neighbor. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, Okay, we have seen uh, the video on Don Hughes Stevenson. So, uh, one is important here. <clears throat> uh, the neighbor principle formulated by Lord Atkins, which says that the rule that you are to love your neighbor becomes in law. You must not injure your neighbor. And the lawyer's question, who is my neighbor? Okay, you must take reasonable steps. Okay, to avoid acts or omissions which you can reasonably foresee would be likely to injure your neighbor so is who is your neighbor <clears throat> then it should be the persons who are closely and directly affected by my act okay so basically uh, in that particular case although there was no contractual duty on the part of the manufacturer towards his friend but the manufacturer owed her duty to take care to ensure that the bottle did not contain noxious matter and he would be liable if the duty was broken. So in this case, the defendant was liable. So basically, the neighbor principle is a uh, is an objective test. Okay. <clears throat> the court would ask hypothetical question. Would a reasonable man who is in the same situation as the defendant foresee that his conduct would adversely affect the plaintiff? Okay. So you should know, as a manufacturer, you ask yourself, right? If I don't clean this bottle, would the person who use it will be affected by my act? If the answer is no, he is not a neighbor. But if the answer is yes, okay, the plaintiff is a neighbor and the defendant owed the plaintiff a duty of care. So the word closely and directly affected by my act, okay, does not mean physically close. It means foresight of a reasonable man who is able to foresee that the plaintiff will be affected by the defendant's act or omission. Okay. Now read yourself this case, Haley and uh, London Electricity Board. Okay. Now we move on to the second element, which is breach of duty. Okay. Once established that the defendant owes a plain, the plaintiff a duty of care, so the next step is to consider whether the breach has, or whether, sorry, whether the duty has been breached, uh, by the defendant. Okay. What is breach? Okay. Uh, breach occurs when defendant does something which is below the minimum standard of care required of him. Okay. Which is measured through the standard of a reasonable man. So who is a reasonable man? Okay. So, uh, the best thing is for you, to look into this case of Bly and the com uh, company of proprietors of the Birmingham Waterworks. Yeah. He said, okay, Anderson B or Baron, uh, negligence is the omission to do something which a reasonable man would do or doing something which a prudent and reasonable man would not do. So what is it then? Okay. Would a reasonable man have acted as the defendant had done? Had the reasonable man faced the same circumstances? Okay. So if a reasonable man would not have acted the defendant in the same circumstances, defendant is said to be breach of duty of care. So who is a reasonable man? Right? Reasonable man has been described as the man on the omnibus. Now what is omnibus? Uh, omnibus is the man who is in the bus in London. So it derived actually from uh, cases previously in London. So omnibus is actually a uh, bus in London. So a man who was in the bus, when they pass through, they can see people, they will ask themselves, oh, if such thing happened, would I do that? Okay. So in other words, it means uh, an ordinary man who is not expected to have particular skills such as plumber, surgeon. Okay. Now, for example, a passerby who renders emergency first aid after an accident is quite, no, is not required to show the skill of a qualified, uh, doctor. He just need to show that he actually can help. Okay. Now, it is for the judge to decide 
One, in the circumstances of particular case, the reasonable would have in contemplation and what is ought to have foreseen. Now, that's this term, reasonably foreseeable. The question of the possibility of an event would depend upon whether or not a particular item or knowledge is to be imputed to reasonable man. Now, I will look into uh, this case. Eh? <clears throat> Okay, Ro was a patient. Dr. G was anesthetist. Okay, so anesthetic <coughs> medicine was uh, contained in glass and pill. Okay, basically kept, okay, properly before used in a solution of phenol. Unfortunately, there was a crack, right, which is very invisible. And phenol has made its, through, uh, it's, made its way through the ampule. And as a result, Ro become paralyzed. Okay, so Dr. G was not negligent, right, at that time. Okay, so because of the risk of invisible crack has not been drawn to him. Okay, uh, there was no knowledge even. It was not even foreseeable that such thing would happen. Okay, now in deciding whether there was a breach of duty, a balance has to be struck between the magnitude of the risk and the burden of the defendant in so doing whether he should or should not. In any, uh, in other words, in every case where duty of care exists, the court must consider whether the risk was sufficient uh, greatly to, inquire, to require defendant to do more than what is actually ought to do. So, three factors to be considered. Firstly, magnitude of risk. Secondly, importance of the object. And thirdly, practicability. practicability. Now, we look into this matter later. Eh?